what you think is the worst uh, or the biggest amount you've lost in like uh, over a period of time, like that has like almost made you tear up because you a million dollars in one year. Or are you just saying just uh, over time? In a couple months. Oh. <laughs> even worse. Oh, uh, all right. Yeah. I, don't, I can't even <laughs> remember right the other questions was, I was going to ask. <laughs> yeah. It was in the stock market. It was in, it was stock market. Cue up the Tamil man. And, and I, and, and, <laughs> Take me to the like, key. And, you know, we can and, keep and, the and, knowledge to ourselves. And I mean, I know people like that. Like, oh, I don't, I'm just... You know, I'm stingy yeah. when it comes to the knowledge. Yeah, I used to be like that. I feel exactly. like I used to be like, uh, I don't really want to sure. tell you what I'm doing. But then it's like, <laughs> but why though? Yeah. I'm thinking them wealthy thoughts, baby. <laughs> What's up, what's up, what's up, everybody? Back again with another special edition, the joint session. I am Stephen Mitchell. You can find me on all social media platforms at Stephen Motivate. And I'm here again with my co-host, my good friend, Mr. Steve James. Yes, yes, we here. Um, it's been a little minute, but we back. It's been a long time. We're back. Shouldn't have left you. But um, we in Vegas again. We in Vegas. Man, we came in. Man, we really like, uh, you know, shout out to Sticky Paws and what they doing out here in Vegas. Love they set up. Check them out if y'all out here. Um, but uh, we got a special, special, special guest for y'all uh, today. You excited about it, bro? Oh, yeah, man. It's not too often you get to uh, have these organic conversations with organic individuals <laughs> facts facts. <laughs> so so look before we get into it i'm gonna introduce myself again real quick steven metro go by steven motivate you know me for the turo cars 17 of those you know me for diamondshinecleaner.com check us out online you know me for the steven motivate brand and all we trying to do there uh, i think the la since the last time we talked we got the academy.stevenmotivate.com y'all can check uh that out to learn more and of course, you know me for this, the Wealthy Thoughts Podcast. Steve, introduce yourself real quick before we get into our special, special, special guest. For sure. So Steve James, man, we doing, we got the, the cars popping in LA, got the Airbnbs popping in LA, um, real estate, got some virtual reality gaming lounge, which is very dope. Uh, we got um, music. We got printing company. We got clothing line. The list goes on. So, you know, we just trying to tap into these things that are generating uh, that income, man. So, Yeah, that's dope. So the thing about it is with all that we're doing, this guest that we have with us today, probably within uh, one week can generate <laughs> as much revenue as we're generating combined, Justin, whatever he gets done in one week. This is a special, special guest for me because it's my family, um, my cousin, my big cousin, uh, friend, uh, mentor. He's taught me some things. Uh, he's picked on me a lot growing up. But, hey, I'm happy to have him here nonetheless. Y'all put y'all hands together. Put the fire in the chat for the one and the only Mr. Maurice Harley. Yeah, boy. What's up, family? How you feeling? I mean, I, ain't, I only got three applause. Just, <laughs> you, still, cool. you still a lot more than that? I am. I am. <laughs> I am. But no, it's good to be here, man. You know, be with my uh, younger cousin and my pseudo cousin over here, Steve. <laughs> For sure. You know. Facts, facts. Um, well, it's good to have you. Glad to be you. here. Thanks for making time uh, to kick it with us today. Now, um, you know, I don't normally do stuff like this. I really don't like talking. <laughs> so, yes, we, you know. we we pulled out. I'm sure we'll have to pay for this favor. I'm not sure how, but we we appreciate it nonetheless. And you know, I think we're gonna call this episode um, "Talking to a Millionaire." 
And <laughs> what I want to ask you, how would you kick this off, is how did a high school dropout mm. from Muncie, Indiana, for those who don't know, I'm from Muncie, Indiana. I know a lot of times I get looped in being from Indianapolis, Indiana, because Steve is from Indy, and that's all good. But truth be told, I'm from Muncie, Indiana. You're from Muncie, Indiana. Small town, you know, less than 100,000 people. Um, how did a high school dropout from Muncie, Indiana, black male, get to this point? Uh, I still don't know. I mean, honestly, but thank you for, you know, telling everybody I dropped out of high school. I appreciate that. Um, just what I want the world to know. Uh, but no, seriously, um, it was just a lot of a, a lot of trials and tribulations. I mean, just a lot of hard work. Um, I mean, I, I did every odd job known to man. You know, I worked at Clark Oil. You know, I'm an old man, so... You know, a lot of you guys don't know what Clark Oil is, but it was a gas station. Mm. I stocked shelves at Walgreens. I bagged groceries. I, man, I did everything, you know, just trying to figure life out because I dropped my last year of high school was 11th grade, mm. you know, so trying to figure life out after, you know, dropping out of high school is just, it's difficult, you know, trying to figure that whole, that whole, you know, matrix out of how to make money legally, you know. And um, so it was difficult, you know. It was very difficult for a long time. As, you know, we were joking off camera, you know, with us, I was the black sheep of the family until somebody else came along, you know, in our family that, that took over that title for a while, <laughs> you know. Shout out to bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, but it was it was difficult, man. My life changed, you know, getting into the music business. And that's what, you know, actually before then, I was homeless too. Mm. And um, I was homeless. And um, mom used to, you know, talk to me about saving money for a rainy day. And as I'm sure that we all have with our parents, like, whatever, mom, you don't know what you're talking about, you know. Shout out to Aunt Joyce. Yeah, and it was just, you know, I never saved. I was always trying to impress other people, um, impress women, trying to be more than I was, and I just didn't have no money, so I became homeless. So, so back it up for us a little bit. Mm -hmm. You, you, so the homeless thing is definitely interesting because that makes the story even that much greater. But before we dive into that, you said you worked at Clark Oil. Clark Oil was a gas station. What yeah. about? Take us back. Like about what? Age. I was eighteen. You... I was eighteen. Okay. I left. I left Muncie when I was seventeen. Um, seventeen or eighteen years old. I left. Um, I was held back in the fourth grade. So, mm. um, and, How, uh, why? Did, and you remember that? Yeah, yeah I remember that because I have ADD or ADHD. Um, so a lot of times I couldn't focus when I was in school, and you know I told I told I asked mom probably last year and I said mom if they would have had medicine for me back then I'd probably would have you know went to college or something which I did end up going to college and that's another story mm. and she said you still would have dropped out <laughs> 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 you know which is probably true but I gotta at least you know make an excuse to make it make it sound better to mama <laughs> she said you still would have dropped out that's so funny. but yeah so yeah I remember it all man I mean I, I remember it all I remember, even if you want to go back, I remember when I knew what I wanted to do in life. Mm. There was three things I wanted to do. I wanted to be a chef, stockbroker, and when I heard Rapper's Delight, I wanted to be in the music business. Wow. And I've always, those were the three things that I wanted to do in life. So when did Rapper's Delight come out? Set late, first, early 80s, late 70s? Uh, 70s, No, I had to, I, 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 I was in the fourth grade. So whoever don't know rappers are like, that's hip, hot. Sugar Hill Gang. That's that song, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hippie to the hip, yeah. hip. I remember I was in the cafeteria at Longfellow, Longfellow uh, Elementary School, right across the street from where you grew up. Grew up. Yeah. Um, next to Huffer Memorial. 
uh, I recited that whole song inside the cafeteria. <laughs> and I knew that it's like, this spoke to me and I knew that that's what I wanted to do. Mm. And from that point on, I would hang out with DJ Whip, you know, Robert McDonald, Stephen McDonald, Michael Kurtz. They were into the music scene in Muncie and that's, I just hung out. Guys you grew up with. Guys I grew up with. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's, I just knew I wanted to just pursue music. And as I said, I wanted to be a chef too. So I took home ec. Mom taught me how to cook all the time. And my mom used to buy me books on uh, stocks mm. for Christmas. Really? Yeah. Yep. Didn't so, know that. So I would always, so those are the three things that I wanted to do in life, you know. So let me ask you this. Do you feel like, because you talked about school there for a minute mm -hmm. and being held back fourth grade, do you feel like, are you one of those people that's like school and Steve, I don't know how you feel about this, but do you feel like school is for everybody? Are you, I mean, obviously you dropped out, but you know, there's a lot of people out there be like, especially nowadays, like don't go to school. So like, where do you, where are you at on that topic? College wise. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a different time when I grew up, I'm 54. So when I grew up, it's a, it, college was important, but not as important as it is now. Mm -hmm. For you not to go to college now, you need to be my intern, you need to be in school. So if you're not in college, it's hard to get an internship, it's hard to learn. You so you need to go to college. Mm. You know, back when, you know, I was growing up, you know, our parents, you didn't need it. It was good to have, but you didn't need it. You could still work Survive. at Chevrolet or yeah. Ford, you know, mm -hmm. you know, Warner Gear, where we yeah. grew up, you know, which the Midwest was mostly factory. So you could go from, high you school. know, high school and have a job where your parents worked for 20, 25 years mm -hmm. and, you know, go in. Same as, you know, my brother Michael did and my brother Mark. So, but now you need to have a college degree. It's, it's, I won't say you need it, but it makes life a lot easier mm. for you because they want you to have that piece of paper behind you yeah. um, to do certain things. And I think it, I think kids need to pursue that because I think a lot of times the younger generation focuses on Instagram or the social media aspect and they look at how life is supposed to be easy and everybody is posting their cars or how they did this. I see so many ads. I hate social media personally, but I am a fan of TikTok. I'll be on TikTok for hours. Um, <laughs> I just got a TikTok. But I think that a lot of times people will post their fantasy life and make people think that, that this is their real life. Mm -hmm. And 90% of the people out there that post stuff, it's not their real life. So you'll see teenagers or 20 year olds that'll say well he did it look at look at this car mm -hmm. there's a place in LA that I can go and act like I'm on a private plane right now mm -hmm. and it's not real yeah so there's a lot of stuff out there so I think a lot of times people look at trying to do it the easy way mm -hmm. because of social media and I think social media is really you know messed up this whole country yeah you know you know it's crazy i was reading this article and um <clears throat> it compared the states to china and like what their kids wanted to be compared to the states mm -hmm. and like the number one um thing before here, you even say it, it's probably influencer influencer yeah yeah absolutely i, I before you even said it i, I but in china mm -hmm. You know, they're jobs. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like these these big jobs. So it, it it's crazy because social media now is I mean, it's it's just crazy. It's a crazy world that we're living in now in the social media aspect of everything is of course there's some pros to it. Mm -hmm. You know, if yeah. you're doing it, the, if you're doing it the right way, there's, but there's pros. But there's a lot of times where I'll see the, I won't mention names because I don't want nobody to get sued, but I'll see certain people that'll post certain things and say, you know, 
sign up for my program or, you know, I can teach you how to be uh, a millionaire in 30 days or I give you a year, <laughs> mm-hmm. but, but you got to pay this $800, the mm-hmm. $799.99 course, mm-hmm. and I'm going to teach you how to become an Amazon dropship person or, or I'm going to show you how to buy real estate with no money down. Mm-hmm. That don't exist. Yeah. I don't give a damn who you <laughs> t- <laughs> talk to. <laughs> it don't exist. Yeah. No, you know, period. It, it, do, it don't exist. So why do you say that? Like, say, what do you mean exactly? Like, it doesn't exist that somebody can teach you or it doesn't exist that... You cannot buy mm. property with no money down. It don't. It, it, Somebody got to put now, some now, money I, I, down I, I let, somewhere. Oh, let, 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 me, let me back that up. If you find, let's say I find you and you have a property to sell and you're a motivated seller and you need to get out this house, maybe. Yeah. But it's rare. Those are those are rare. And so you're saying people are selling these rare dreams. They're selling, they're selling dreams. Oh, yeah, you're selling. They're stuff. selling dreams. And most of the times, I mean, there's times where, you know, these loopholes, it's like, you're teaching someone fraud. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Because there's there's been times like, oh, yeah, you don't have to do this. And that's why you have to be careful, number one, who you listen to. That's why the, the most important thing is you having a mentor that's actually in the field and is actually doing it mm-hmm. is totally different. So when we have real estate conversations, we talk about mm-hmm. that. Because I'm not about to listen to someone who can, oh, no, you can skip that. It's like, yeah, you skip that. That's going to land you right into a uh, federal prison. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's you just got to be you got to be careful because it's the, back to social media. That's a, that's a con. It's too many people. There's too much stuff out there, and you don't know what's real or what's fake. Yeah. So so don't don't get on social media. Click on the get rich quick guru scheme, there's, man, there's, and there's, try to skip steps. Man, there's been get rich quick schemes. <laughs> Forever. Yeah. You know, and they just don't exist, man. You you there's no such thing as get rich quick. Mm. It's is it's is get rich long time. Mm. It's gonna take you a long time to be able to make money. Mm-hmm. You know, now there are of course certain examples or, or certain things that have happened for people. You won the lottery, you know, grandpa dropped dead and left you twenty million dollars. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know nobody black that has that that that, that that's happened to, but, right? But it does happen, yeah, you know, for sure. You know, but those are special cases. <laughs> yeah, special cases. <laughs> Hard work is, is 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 what gets you there. You know, for me, you know, having like you said a mentor, you know, is such a a great thing. Having somebody like when I bought my first property, um, which was what. Uh, 16 unit apartment building. You're out the gate. You started with 16. Yeah, my my first commercial uh, property was a 16 unit apartment building. So hold on, before you say that, mm-hmm. why did you? What made you go directly to commercial and not residential? Uh because that's you don't see that most of the time. People get their feet wet with residential or maybe a duplex, but to go hop immediately into a 16 unit apartment which, building which, is which which was a scary 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 <laughs> yeah, endeavor I bet, I bet. you know at the time um what made me do is i met uh, a close friend of mine he is one of my closest friends his name is Todd uh i met Todd on a cruise um 19 years ago i think and we just became friends and um he sold commercial real estate mm-hmm. and so we started talking, and Todd, I love you to death, but Todd is weird, has his own, you know. Way of thinking. Quirks. <laughs> yeah, quirks. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> you know, um, but I love Todd. and But we just hit it off, and he's like, you know, you should buy this property. So I bought this 16-unit apartment building in Wisconsin. And um, it was one of the best things that I had, I, I did. Now, it was, it was, like I said, it was a scary thing to do. But the one thing that I, I I didn't want to do residential, even though I've owned residential, um, there's so much. You really don't make any money off of residential property. Mm. You know, I think as 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 people, especially for black people, 
we're always taught to buy real estate. You know, when you get some money, buy some real estate, buy you a house, buy you a, you know, this, uh, a duplex or something like that. But they don't realize the expenses that come with that. So let's say you have a mortgage on that residential property and the water heater go out. The roof cave in. You mm-hmm. got to replace. You got to replace that. Replace that, and so that takes away from your profit. Mm-hmm. When you have commercial, you spread the risk around sixteen units. So if somebody moves out, I got fifteen. You know, it, I got fifteen units still. That's generating. That's generating income. Mm-hmm. But I still also had to, which I no longer do, residential at all. Period. Um, but you still had to turn the apartment. You still had to. I still had to replace the roof. I still had to, you know, um, pave the, the the driveways and all that. It's still a lot of still a lot of money. Work. Yeah. Yeah. So about about what year is this now that you you've put uh, your money into a commercial that was, property? That was wow. Early two thousands or late nineties? Yeah, probably yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably like two thousand five. And you got it for how much? Uh seven hundred and seventy five thousand. So I had to come up with a hundred and fifty thousand. Mm-hmm. Put it down. Put it down. Yeah. Yeah. Which was which was scary, you know, at that time. Now I've the down payments that I got to come up with now is it's ridiculous. So, so let's <laughs> before we get so let's back up a bit. You yeah. you're, you're now in the early two thousands. Mm-hmm. You, you're buying property. Let's go back to high school. Mm-hmm. So. You was and even elementary school. You mm-hmm. learning from your mom. You said something earlier that your mom, my aunt, said something about saving. Yeah, mom. Mom always used to say. So I was a thief growing up. Uh, I was still. <laughs> I was still. Let's from, put that out there. Yeah, the truth yeah, comes from, out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my, mama loved us. Mom used to. Mom used to. Um, I'm into collecting coins. Like I'm a. You've seen it. I, I collect yeah. coins. I collect gold, I collect silver, but mom used to give us these 50 cent pieces and we had these Steeler or football helmet banks. Mm-hmm. And so she would put stuff in there. I remember those little yeah, banks yeah, in the basement. Yeah. And I was I would I would steal <laughs> out of everybody's banks. <laughs> so you still it from Mark. Yeah, I'm still I'm still from Mark Michael. <laughs> but, you know. Yeah, so I, I stole a lot. I stole a lot, and uh, that's why I've been paid back a billion times by my children. But anyway, um, but yeah, but mom always would talk to me about saving, mm-hmm. saving for a rainy day, mm-hmm. you know, and because you never know when it's going to rain, right? And when you're young, you don't listen to the wisdom of your parents yeah. or even older people around you because you have youth. And, and you don't even understand what a rainy day is. You don't understand credit. You right. don't understand right. any of that thing. It's like I got some money, and my other head is thinking. So I need that. I need to impress this girl over there. Right. And so I'm trying to get some whatever. And so I'm spending the money doing that instead of thinking that, you know, about saving. And you know, mom used to teach me about you know putting money away, but mom didn't understand investing. You know, right. and stuff like that. You know, but you heard her when she said "save." You yeah. remember that from a young age. I remember, save. I, I remember right. that from a young age, and I remember it when I was when I was older. You know, when I left Muncie to go to Chicago to live with my dad. Okay, so wait, talk about that. So mm-hmm. talk about you. You held back fourth grade. Mm-hmm. You want to be three things. You want to be a chef. You want to be stockbroker. Stockbroker, and you want to be in the music business. In the music whatever, business, whatever kind of way. And then fast forward, you told us earlier you dropped out in 11th grade. So what happened in between that? Why did you not become a chef? Why did you not become a stockbroker? And how did you end up dropping out of school? And did you think at that point you was going to be in the music business? Like, or was you, what were you at before you moved? I'm guessing you moved after dropping out? Yeah, so I, my intentions was never to drop out of high school. That was, that was never my intention. I remember telling mom, my parents were divorced when I was six years old. So I was born in Chicago, grew up in Muncie. Mm. And so I remember I didn't know my dad. And I was always just, I wanted to be around my dad. So I remember telling mom that, mom, I'm I'm leaving. And mom was sitting at the table crying 
because I was leaving. Mm-hmm. Well, I didn't understand why she was crying, but I understand now. <laughs> so I was, you in the eleventh grade? Did yeah, you okay. I'm eleventh grade. That's after I after eleventh grade was over. I'm like, mom, I'm leaving. And do you have have you, have you talked to your pops on the phone? Has he like? Yeah, what? he knew I was coming. Okay. Yeah, we had already discussed this. I had knew he knew I was moving. Yeah. To Chicago because I just wanted to be up under my father. Mm-hmm. Um. So when I when I when I went to Chicago, went to Bolingbrook High School. Um, me and my dad to enroll in school, and they said, well, the credit differentials um, or credit difference, I would have to be in high school two more years, mm. Mm. you know, because the credits from— Didn't transfer. Yeah, it didn't transfer from Indiana to Illinois. And I, I'm like, I'm not—I'm already 18. Mm. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to be in high school at 20. <laughs> you were not having that. <laughs> no, nah, so I'm like— <laughs> So my dad was like, well, just go get your GED. I'm like, okay. Well, I still never got my GED. <laughs> he didn't follow up on me. Nah. I, was, I studied for a little bit. But I was like, man, I don't, I don't need that. I'll, I'll figure it yeah. out. But, but the crazy thing, just, just to make, just make this even funny, I went to college. I went to college. I went to college to be a uh, uh, business computer programming. I had a 3.75 GPA. I went to... Um, uh, Joliet Junior College, and I went to the um, uh, COD College of DuPage. How? How, how is that possible? <laughs> exactly. I knew you was going to ask. <laughs> how? You got people right now about to drop out of high school and go to college. Yeah. So how? I, so how I did it was I went to um, I, I went to enroll at College of DuPage. I was working for this company called American Healthcare. It was an insurance company, and I was working. Um, in the filing department. And so this guy, Steven Stell, we're still friends to this day. He fired me. Um, but that's another story. But he fired me, I mean, hired me to come over into the computer department. And I was just fascinated by computers, you know. And so he's like, Maurice, you should take some college courses, you know. And I was like, all right. So nobody ever knew. I didn't talk about me dropping out of high school. Mm. Uh, up until, I mean, my lawyer knew uh, Phil. I think mm-hmm. you met, you know, yeah, Phil. Know Phil yeah. yeah. So um, he knew. Um, only if you know, only a few people in the family knew. So I never really ever discussed it mm. ever. Nobody ever knew. So why not? You was embarrassed, but yeah, I was embarrassed. I was mm-hmm. embarrassed um, by not. You know, Finish. who did you? School. Who who did you? I mean, I know that's a common question, but. What embarrassed you about it? Like, who were you afraid of exposing that to? Well, it was just, it was just, it was just, um, well, first I got, you know, it was hard. I had to lie on my application to get a job that I graduated from high school, mm. one. And two, it's just something that, you know, it's not something that you really want to talk about, mm-hmm. you know, that you dropped out of high school because people think that you're automatically dumb because you drop out of mm-hmm. high school. Now, the reason why I was probably able to get around that is that I could articulate and have conversations about anything and nobody would ever suspect mm-hmm. that I dropped out of high school. And probably back then, they probably weren't even checking to like, it's like, oh, if you're if you're applying for this job, you know, like now, yeah. you gotta have your yeah. high school diploma yeah. Or, yeah. or show your record or whatever. Yeah. They probably didn't even. Yeah. So, so, but anyway, but going back to when I rode in college, I went to, you know, the lady was like, well, we need to get your uh, high school diploma and all that. And so I did the flim flam, you know, trying to get her <laughs> off guard. And she, I got it and just, you know, sweet talked her and laughed. And she forgot, <laughs> she forgot all about the high school diploma. Crazy. And I went to college to DuPage. And I said, <laughs> I, and I, as I said, I had, I, I was taking two or three classes. I still got the books and, and the grades. In my in, in a lockbox, uh, in, in a trunk. You remember those trunks that you would come down to the, in, in Muncie that we would have? Um, I think I had a black trunk, but I still have that black trunk. Okay. From like 30 years ago, 30 or 40 years ago. But it has um, my um, books, a uh, program. Like I used to program in Pascal, DOS. Really? Um, That's crazy. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Who would have so, thought? Yeah, I, used, I did all that. Yep. I got so much more respect for you now. So I. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, I, so it was. So it was. It was. It was intriguing for me. Having ADD is difficult, but when you find something that you enjoy that keeps your mind occupied, 
then I'm able to sit still. Mm. So it's hard for me to to sit still anywhere. I'm always fidgety. Um, I didn't take my medicine today, so you see me moving around and stuff like that. <laughs> you know, Stephen made a joke, you know, the other day, like, what's wrong with your mouth? No, it wasn't a joke. <laughs> yeah, well, well, it wasn't a joke, but it- but I asked. You, you asked. So what right. you on? Yeah. <laughs> so, but I take, I, I take, I take Vyvanse and it helps me. But mm. when I was back then, because of, I, I enjoyed programming. Yeah. And I enjoyed figuring out the equations and trying to make the program work. Really? Because I was always smarter than everybody in school. Oh, I just oh. didn't apply myself because I wanted to be the Class school clown. clown. Mm -hmm. I remember getting in, going back, and we'll touch on whatever else, but I remember going to store middle school, and I would get in trouble all the time. Like, I was the school clown. <laughs> but I was good in sports. I, I ran track. And I was always fast. So I remember I got in trouble in the store, and one of the uh, my track coaches. Store like, Elementary. Yeah, store, no, store Middle School. Store Middle School. Okay. And the track coach said, he saw me, and he's like, Maurice, what you do now? I'm like, man, I don't know. <laughs> so, all right. He said, um, I said, am I going to be able to uh, go to the track meet today? <laughs> he said, don't worry about it. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> So I would always mm. I would always get out of trouble ah. because all the teachers like me. Do you think that taught you something at that age? Like, I'm going to get in trouble, but I got this likability factor. I have this thing where, do you think you kept that even if you didn't realize it consciously? Probably, but I, I don't ever think, you know, now as a as a 54-year-old adult, I, I, I can go back and look at it and say, okay, yeah, maybe. Yeah. But I just never really thought about it. I was just good at what you did. I was just personable, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So if my cousin was almost a computer engineer genius. Almost. And we never knew. Steve. Well, Clay, uh, Steve still fired me. <laughs> What's what happened with that? You got fired. I got fired. I. He asked me to go clean up this. Um, they were moving out of this. Um, building and me and this guy named Dan um, took this fire hose and did a bunch of damage to it, uh, to the building, set off this fire hose. And he's like, Maurice, I got to let you go. Jeez. And so. The rest is history. Rest Hold is on, history. So and, a, and a bunch of cars repossessed for after that. But yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> go. So the transition into real estate, how mm -hmm. like. Because that's still who starts with sixteen <laughs> units. I so, like, it. what age was that though? I, I was, mean, because I know it was. I was thirty, thirty, thirty-five, thirty-six. Okay, mm -hmm. thirty-five, thirty-six. Because I, so you were more. I mean, you're mature at this time for to to. <laughs> what, but I'm saying to to even yeah, have yeah. that opportunity. I mean, yeah. number one, where you get one fifty from. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> so and and then so, what age did you get fired from this job? Oh, that was back. I was I was you in was twenty one. Yeah, I was twenty one. Yeah. So now you go through this period of being broke, broke. I was broke, broke for a long time. Man. What's a long time? Long time. It wasn't thirty four. <laughs> right by thirty four, you was. I didn't. It. I didn't start. I didn't start making any money until I was twenty eight. Mm. You know, making. I I, I worked at Nordstrom's, um, selling shoes. That's how I got. That's that's that was how I got into the music business but so wait wait wait. did you feel like it was over you, you weren't gonna be a chef you had this computer job but you weren't gonna be a stockbroker you got fired from that you had no music business connections so for that year of being broke was you pretty much did you feel like a lo were you a loser oh, i was a loser absolutely did you feel like that you feel like i'm a loser <laughs> yeah so so, how did you get to this Nordstrom job? Where you end up? I was working at a company called um, Turner's. Well, actually, you know, man, is he gonna have fun editing this? Um, <laughs> I was a I was a young dad. You know, I my I had my first kid at nineteen. Mm. Andrew, um, shout out to Drew. Yeah, my Drew. first my first kid at nineteen, and I was you know talking about t talked about that a couple of days ago with. Um, how you know being a, being a, a nineteen year old dad and no money it was just I wasn't ready to be a father 
neither was she rather be ready to be a mother, but I was more of the coward, not owning up to my responsibilities as, as a kid. But then after that, I had another kid, Aaron. Um, after that, and I still had no money, mm. you know? So I had, I had, I had three kids with no money. Mm. But but before the third kid, I had I, I mean I just I just didn't have no money. So yeah, I was a, I was I was a loser. I was I had every. I remember calling Mama one day and said, "Mama, I'm gonna write a book." I don't know what I'm gonna write a book about, <laughs> but I told her I was gonna write a book. I was always trying to figure out something, something. Mm-hmm. to do instead of really trying to focus on getting a job mm. because I was always trying to hustle. I did illegal things. We ain't going to really touch on that, but I never sold drugs. Um, but I was doing everything possible. To try to go the short route. Yeah. To try to do it quick. I mean, I would see like the drug dealers in Chicago with the, you know, the beautiful women and the, and the crazy cars and they hanging out with the athletes. I'm like, yeah, I want to be that guy, you know? And I'm glad I never sold drugs. I did try, but it didn't work out for me. <laughs> and I'm, I thank God for that. But it was just so, I was just trying to do so many things. Mm-hmm. And and I was never good at any of it. Only thing I was good at was just talking. talking. Mm-hmm. And so how I got, I started selling shoes at this company called Churnins in Chicago. It was a big shoe company. And Nordstrom's was opening up in Chicago and Oak Brook. And everybody was leaving Churnus to go to Oak Brook, to Nordstrom's, and I was able to talk my way into getting a job over there. Mm. And that changed my life. Really? In a, in a sense of learning how to dress, learning how to talk to Customers. people with money, because mm-hmm. a lot of people in Oak Brook, Illinois, have money. Mm-hmm. And so you, you're you able to have different conversations with people. I, it was a, a guy that, uh, a multimillionaire, he owned this company called Canfield, Canfield Pop. Um, we, he would come in and we would just got cool. There was another guy that owned this company called Felco Doran Company. He was a old Jewish guy that would come in with six of his friends, like, Moshi, Moshi. <laughs> That's what <laughs> so he called you. He called me Moshi. <laughs> and he would take me out to dinner with him and his boys after he spent like $6,000 worth of shoes. Wow. And we would just, get, so I've met a lot of people and a lot of connections from from that. I was, what did that do to you? Did, you? did that make you think, man, I want to move up and be the CEO of Nordstrom now? Or nah, like, what did it? No, nah, I just wanted to, I, I would meet people that had jobs that, where they could travel, mm. you know, and be out. And I wanted to do that. So you, you got know, exposure yeah, that way. I was trying to, I, I tried to become a shoe rep for huh. a lot of the shoe companies. So I, I came out to Vegas when, at the convention center with no money and resumes and trying to get a job. Really? Yeah, I was trying to work for anybody that was trying to hire, like the carrier shoe line. Mm. You know, and I was doing that. And I, I did so many different things. Up until I got into the music business, did I change actually even before that a friend of mine Anthony Morgan who played for the Chicago Bears I went to his house and I when I say I was broke I was broke broke <laughs> like broke you know your kids have more money in their pocket than I did at that time <laughs> so I went to Anthony's house and I don't know how we became friends and went to his house he had shoes you know Nikes everywhere because he you know he was an athlete and he says, Mo, I'm rich. <laughs> Duh. And I said, I see that. <laughs> he says, you know how I'm going to stay rich? I said, how? He says, I invest my money. Mm. So I'll always be rich. And I said, okay. So I, I said, if I ever get a chance to make some money, I'm investing. I'm investing. Mm-hmm. So even though mama bought me investment books, I ain't know nothing about investing. Mm-hmm. Mm. I taught myself how to invest, laying in bed, watching CNBC from five in the morning until it went off. Wow. And that was in 1996. Mm. I taught myself everything about investing. 
So, so when did you get in the music business? At that time, too? 96. Yeah, I started the day that Tupac died, uh, September 13th, 1996. That's, that's the day that my life changed. Wow. You started the day. I think we just I got past I got, that. I, I got the phone call from Paris Johnson that said, um, welcome to death row. September 13th, 1996. They had just pronounced Tupac dead. Mm. And so I'm like, I'm elated and sad at the same time. I was more I was more happy than sad. <laughs> you know, right. He gone. I got a job. And from that point on, man, it was just like, I'm just gonna start saving. You know, just little I was putting away two hundred dollars a month. Mm -hmm. And I was just learning, just watching C N B C and before, like like what they do now is they have the ticker symbol with the name. When I was learning, they just had the ticker symbol, so I had to figure it all out. Mm. You know, internet wasn't really that advanced at that time. Yeah. Um, but I just, I taught myself. And how far away are you from the, so you're 35, 34 when you do the real estate deal. Mm -hmm. That's your first real estate deal. And in 96, how old are you roughly? I was 28. It's 28. I'm, I'm, I was born in 68, so that's easy math for you. So before that, so what is that? 34 to 28 is what? Seven years. Seven Six years. or seven years, yeah. Six years. So what happens during that time? You, you're saving money. You're making money in the music business. What is mm -hmm. that like? What is oh. making money in the music business? Are you like, like, what is that like? <laughs> Everybody wants to be in the music business, right? Seemingly. Black yeah. people in general. Yeah. I mean, it was, it, was, it, was, it was amazing. I mean, to go from... Nothing. To go from, yeah. I was going to say, to go from zero to making a significant amount of money... It it just it it, it it helps your confidence. It it you, you're able to take care of your family. You're able to take care of your, you know, everybody. And it's just you have a different level of respect from your family and friends. Mm. You know, when did you see that change? Ninety six. You you got your first job. Was you excited? Probably. Did you tell everybody? Everybody, man. What? <laughs> at a party, man. I'm in. I'm from Muncie, Indiana, man. <laughs> Everybody knew, you know. But what was your you did, job? What was the job title? Uh, I was um, uh, director of radio promotions for Death Row. So mm -hmm. the Midwest radio promotions person for Death Row, which was Death Row, was the hottest label at the time. Yeah. So I could walk in, and I'm like, yeah, I'm with Death Row, and it was like, all right, anything, you know. You so I'm hanging out with Snoop. I'm watching. So just just imagine watching Snoop on TV. Two years before, you was broke. Had no attachment to the music. You listened to Doggy, you know. Yeah, Doggy Style. Yeah, doggy, or, or whatever it was. Yeah, Doggy <laughs> Style. And you in a limo with Snoop. That, that, it's just, it's, it's surreal. Wow. You know, or, you know, my favorite rapper at the time was LL. You know, being in a limo with L and L saying, yo, you know, Mo, I like you. You want to come up to my room and watch this video and have and have dinner? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, so it's y'all so, became kind of cool. Kinda. Yeah, it was just, it was just, it was just different. The celebrities that you saw on TV are your peers now. Mm. They're people that you have their cell numbers. Mm -hmm. You know, you know. I remember Tyrese called my, would call the house, and I would talk to Tyrese, or Tyrese would invite me to go hang out with him at Transformers mm -hmm. uh, when he was shot Transformers in 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 um, Mexico, like mm -hmm. Mo, come hang out. Or he check on Aaron when he broke his leg, mm -hmm. you know, or Ruben Stutter, I, you know, I have Uncle Royce and mom um, hanging out with, with Ruben or Fantasia or just different celebrities. So it, it, it started to change in, yeah, 2000, 2001, because it's, I'm not the same Vincent. Mm -hmm. You know, from you know that had every harebrained scheme, and your dad, which I love, your dad and, and mom too. The one thing I love about my mother is that no matter how much of a fuck up I was, she still supported me. Mm. You know, even though she probably hung up and like he ain't shit. <laughs> you know, but she still supported me. Mm -hmm. Like, you know? what do you mean exactly? Like, she never, she never, she never put me down for being that loop going through that loser period. Yeah, she never, you know, she never 
did that. She would always she stopped loan she stopped loaning me money. Yeah. You know, <laughs> she stopped giving me money. She was like, no. But you still felt like she believed in man, Mama always believed in me, and that's why I, I I love Mama. You know, she's still disappointed that I did not graduate from high school. Mm-hmm. And I remember I flew Mama, I think, to Europe first class, and I said, Mama's not bad for a high school dropout, is it? <laughs> and, you know, she's like, I'm tired of you hearing about it now. You know? <laughs> I'm tired of you telling everybody you're a high school dropout. I'm like, oh. What for? <laughs> <laughs> What's the biggest check you got during that time? You start making money. When, when was you like, dang, I'm getting money now? Was it was it before the real estate or yeah, was it, it? Yeah, it was it was it was before the real estate. Okay. Um, I w- when I came into the music business, I be- I was Mr. Hustler. Mm. You know, I was always my hands was in so many different like like what you and I was before you two. Working hard, trying yeah, to make was, other things pop. I was, I was, I was, I had my hand in 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 a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, and um, so I was, I was making, I was making a ridiculous amount of money. Yeah, you know, to go from zero to sometimes you making a couple hundred grand, mm. you know, or to go from zero to one hundred fifty thousand dollars, you know, in a year or two, and it's like this, this is surreal. Yeah, That's you know, you know, I remember I bought. I bought two Rolexes. Um, I, yeah, I bought. I, I went out and bought a a Rolex, and then two days later, I went and bought another one. Is that a Rolex you're wearing right now? No, it's Audemars Piguet. I've stepped up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm friends with the CEO of AP right now. He so said I, I stepped yeah, up. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm strictly AP. I don't, I don't wear nothing. I wear nothing but AP. <laughs> there's, there's levels to the watch game. Oh, there's, there's, I mean, there's certain levels that I, I'm not even at. Like Richard. I, I could buy a Richard Meal, but why? Yeah, you know that's start to start at Richard Meal is a quarter of a million dollars. Yes, yeah, I could put a quarter of a million dollars in 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 some real estate transaction, but yeah, I'm strictly AP. You know. So this is interesting though. We, we hear a lot about rappers, entertainers, people with bread, blowing it. Mm-hmm. They get it. They they don't have it no more. You see people falling off NBA contracts. Why, you know, you still are, how much do you think you're worth right now, roughly? Just a, maybe not a figure, but ballpark. You think it's uh, seven figures, eight figures, somewhere in between? Mm. Okay, no, no, somewhere in between. <laughs> I'll tell you off camera. Okay. Um, oh, <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> so... Before we get into anything else, the your deposit for the sixteen unit. Oh uh, yeah, so it came from like you saved it. Well, you the, saved up. Yeah, I for saved. That. I saved it, and it was, a, it was a stock market. Got you know, you. Stock market. I remember when my. I remember when, when I saw my account hit a million dollars, and I'm like, damn. <laughs> And I was like, all right, I, I I can buy, you know. And it was just like, okay. So I bought. I I don't think I had a million dollars then, but I had. Um, I took whatever whatever money I had and I I put it towards that sixteen unit apartment building. Got you. You know, I don't think I had. I don't think I had that kind of bread at the time when I bought it, but it was just I I know I didn't have it because I was trying to I was freaking out. How to get it? How to get it? And that was the largest check that I had ever had Even to it. had to give out. Yeah. And it's like you know, when you've never done something, mm-hmm. it scares you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, when you've done it the first time, it's easier. It's easier. Like I bought a gas station, mm. and when I bought my gas station, that was the scariest thing on earth to do. Because that was the that was money that I never thought I would ever dish out. Yeah, and I'm like I'm like I got to come up with how much, and so and I didn't have it, you know. So I'm having to maneuver stuff because people don't realize. So you did have it, but you- I have it, but people don't understand. There's your net worth and there's liquid. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You didn't have the liquid. Yeah, I wasn't liquid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I had to liquidate. Yeah. To get it. Yeah. So, 
And but once I did that, then I was like, okay, I'm not afraid. Let's go buy this other one. Mm-hmm. You know. I, you, oh yeah. Sixty days later, I was like, I'm gonna go buy. I bought a Kentucky Fried Chicken. Mm. So it's it's funny you say that. I, I'm nowhere near the level of where you're at. <laughs> Just, but the house that we that we bought. Uh, and flipped, and you know the one mm-hmm. I was telling you about. Mm-hmm. That was the most money that I like. You don't sleep at night. No, it's 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 different when, especially when you use your money, mm-hmm. because it's different when you get a loan. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I go to the bank, you get a loan. Like, this was money that I saved up, and I'm like, how is this go? You know what I mean? It's the scariest thing. You don't sleep, brother. Yeah, no, that's the scariest thing. So you saying that, but now. That that period is over, you and I re, and I got and I got that back plus some. Yeah. Now it's like, oh, it's easy to because it's like the risk factor now is like there is no risk because you know that that point when it, that was the scariest for you. It's mm-hmm. like, well, it can't get no worse than that. It was like, that was already the scariest moment yeah. for me. There, there, there's things that that and and you and I touched about talked on this you know not too long ago. Love our parents, mm-hmm. parents. Have, have, have my my parents, your parents, our parents have done an incredible job. But there's only my mama thinks I'm crazy for a lot of things that I've I do mm-hmm. because purchases purchases whether it's the watch or or real estate or cars or whatever it is because that's not how they they lived, they lived or how they how they came up mm-hmm. you know and so when you are trying to do something, it's kind of hard to have those conversations with your parents because mm-hmm. it's like, you know, how can I have those conversations and you help me navigate it because you've not done it. Right. And it's not slight against them because right. they just weren't taught that. Mm-hmm. And so now I'm able to teach my kids when they're ready to learn. Mm-hmm. Um to do a certain things and we can have those conversations and I can, I can have a better way of guiding them, you know, because I've done it. See, and that, but see, that's, I think that's the difference in just growth in general. Like our, our generation of parents is different now. So for you, for you to have the knowledge that Mm -hmm. you have now Mm -hmm. and to be able to pass that to your kids, like we're in that same, like our kids are younger, but I can only imagine when mm-hmm. they, when we get to a certain age when they can start. It's like it, there's power in passing that knowledge yeah. and to have the knowledge as an adult. But there's things that, like I said, that our parents taught us mm-hmm. to get us to where we were. For sure. Now, then it goes from... What you do with that. Yeah, what you do with it. Do you take that little that they gave you mm-hmm. and build on that? And it's so important to have people around you like I told my son, Aaron, um, a couple weeks ago, having successful people around you means the world. Mm-hmm. Mm. You know, if you don't, they don't have to be wealthy. Big bar, though. They don't have to. They don't have to be wealthy. But when you have successful people around you, mm-hmm. it motivates you. Mm-hmm. Now I got, I got a, quite a few friends, and I call them close friends. One especially, um, he's filthy. You met him, yeah. You know, and um, filthy, <laughs> filthy. Yeah, filthy. <laughs> That's <laughs> but, the word. <laughs> but but he he motivated me. Like I used to want to buy gold, mm-hmm. and he told me he's like, "Yo, I got, I think I got a half a million dollars worth of gold in my safe mm-hmm. at home." Mm-hmm. So I started buying gold because mm-hmm. that's like you know. I've been procrastinating on doing this for so long. Now that you're doing it, it's contagious. Now, now I do it. So, yeah, you, it's not like you. I, I, I can't compete with him. Right. One thing that you. One thing about money for men, it's a measuring stick. Mm-hmm. I, I, I can't. I, I can't. I'm never going to compete with him. I want to. Yeah. But. You know, for men is you know, women have their measuring sticks like the purses or whatever. Or men is money, mm. and with but with him, it's or my uh, my friends is just it having successful people around you 
motivates you to want to do more. Mm-hmm. And, it, and it motivates you to not want to sit on your ass. Mm-hmm. I'm lazy by nature. You call me most of the time, I'm like, yo, I'm in the bed. <laughs> yeah, you know, I like true. to sleep. I got it from mama. Yeah. You know, but when it's time for me to get up, I'm going to shave, I'm going to cut my hair, and I'm going to go out and present myself the best foot forward, and I'm going to go out and out hustle you. Mm-hmm. But you got to have successful people around you because when you have successful people around you to mentor you, to help guide you, it makes you want to do better. Mm-hmm. So I want to get back to this question about the celebrities because mm-hmm. everybody looks up to the celebrities. But it sounds like you're on this cruise with this guy. He's the one that puts you on to real estate. Celeb- not, not, I know a lot of celebrities. I know a lot of them. Ain't none of them ever helped me do nothing. Mm. Not a one. So celebrities. Celeb- Why is that? Why do you? Because uh, I'm thinking where I was going with that is like, these are the people that are very successful. Your friend that's filthy or your friend that's putting you on real estate. Seems like you were listening to them mm-hmm. and you got that motivation from them. Mm-hmm. But then on the other side, it seemed like with celebrities, like maybe some of that would come from them. But no, there's no such thing as 98 percent of the celebrities that are in my phone that I can pick up and call right now. Are not helping me. It, they're not putting me on because celeb. You have to understand they're trying the, to. Put, they're trying to. But it's not even that. The, the the mind of a celebrity is they're into the accolade. They're, the for people to to recognize them Self. or that they're selfish by nature. Mm, that's part so, of what makes them a celebrity is yeah, having that selfish. They're, they're selfish by nature. Mm. It's great to know them, but once you get into the music business, you're around them all the time. You realize that. I'd rather just be with my normal friends yeah. mm. because your because your regular friends are your true friends. Yeah. I've you know my celebrity friends, man. They're it's cool to see them. It's cool to have them in my phone. It's yeah. cool to be able to you know reach out to them every once in a while. But I've yet to have one of them say, "Mo, let's do a deal together." Mm. Or you, I, I this it's funny you say that because. I think it's a, I think it's a like you said it's a self thing. I think it's a selfish thing because as an as an artist, you know, we want to be notified for our work. Mm-hmm. So it's like before even being on like when you're in that grinding phase of getting there, it's like, "Oh, let me do everything to get there myself." But you're not thinking about other people because but it, it's but, a it's a it's like you sensitive about your own yeah well it's ish. not even but I I think that it's it's a it's, it has to be a selfish or you don't know no like, they, a lot they, of a lot of people uh, uh, celebrities why well, I'm just saying they may not even have no they know okay yeah it's Dude, just I, they don't I, 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 like I said I won't mention I I've been around like I'll, I'll give you one example DMX never changed mm-hmm. from the time that DMX was I was with him when we were on tour. Um, X was quiet, hmm. super quiet. When Get At Me Dog came out, his personality came out, but X always stayed the same. Hmm. Now, there are other people that were, that have changed. That Based on the moment, based on the environment, based on based the, on, based the record. On, based on how big they of a celebrity it. they have gotten. Yeah. Money. So, so it becomes to where, you know, all right, Mo's here. Mo just walked through the dressing room to, yo, I got to see if he want to see you. Okay. So it's just, it's different. Yeah. You know, and it's just people change. I mean, mm-hmm. people change and evolve, whether that's good or bad, but people change. But do you think most of it's ego? Absolutely. No, so yeah. that's, Absolutely. That's probably the biggest. Absolutely. That and money. Yeah. Ego and money. Yeah. I mean, if you, if you have money. <laughs> Feed each other. If you have money, you become... Money is just going to make you into what you really were or mm-hmm. really are anyway. If you're an asshole, you're going to be a bigger asshole because you got a lot of money. Mm-hmm. If, you're an, if you're a nice guy, you're just going to be a nicer guy, you know, with money. And having money is a gift and a curse, you know. You know and I'm, I'm, I don't have a, good, a, a whole lot of money, but it's a gift and a curse because you got it. My phone rings every day. 
So now let me because I want to ask you that because mm-hmm. I remember being in college, and I we won we was doing this. It was a calendar or something. You remember this? And I called and asked you for some bread for a calendar. It was a calendar or something. That thing flopped. It didn't do nothing. It was a complete waste. But you didn't give us the money for that. I think it was five grand or something like that. It ended up being a terrible thing. But how often are you asked every day for money? Every day. And so is that part of the curse of it? Does that? Yeah. You got family members that ask you for money. You got friends that ask you for money. Everybody got a, everybody got an idea, a grand, a grand idea. You know, everybody got an idea, <laughs> or, or they, you know, something happens, and it's like, and, and that's that's why I told you. I said sometimes I just want to be Vincent, or Maurice the friend, or just whatever. Just just call and ask me how I'm doing. Mm. You know, so it's like first calls, like, but it ain't you before y'all, y'all may, even, no, may no, not have even no, talked no, that it, much. Yeah, well, it may not talk, or they'll, or it'll be like, hey, man, what's up? Are you good? Yeah, man, I'm good, man, but shh, man, I'm going through a rough patch. Right now, <laughs> they man. hit you with the rough patch immediately. You, know, you, know, <laughs> you ain't gonna believe. <laughs> I'm going through a rough patch right now, man. I, I need to, I need to, and, and and they don't ask you for small money. Big, big boys. It's, 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 you know, hundred dollars. Be like, yo, man, I got you. If somebody call me for hundred dollars. I'm like, yo, man, yeah. <laughs> they would call me like, yo, I need, a, I need, a, I need a, I need a couple thousand. Um, what the heck was that? Yeah, I need, a, I need a couple thousand or Siri trying to ask you for money. You know, yeah, probably. You know? But yeah, so, but it, it's, 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 it's not small money. So, so with, with that, I mean, but that's part of being. You would consider yourself the breadwinner out of your family. Yes, I am. As I said when I was talking to my friend Carvin, until we met our other part of the family, you know, the new the new side. Mm-hmm. I have I, I was the most successful in our family. You know that that did it mm-hmm. because there was nobody that had did it. Before me, right? I don't know of anybody that said that they could be a millionaire in our family before me. Me neither. There was none, you know. So, so, so the gift and the curse of that, because it's always and being a millionaire, it's, it's like multi-millionaire. You know, that's the that's where you want to be at. You don't you don't want to just have a million. You want to. You got a million. You don't even have a million. You, yeah. You what Steve be Harvey said, you. One cheeseburger, you had. A, he said he, he had a million dollars. Got yeah. bought a cheeseburger. He was at nine nine hundred <laughs> nine nine yeah. nine nine nine. <laughs> so, but yeah, but it, it, the gift and the curse is just people that sometimes when you share with friends, family, what you're doing or being successful, it opens up for them to ask for something, mm-hmm. and that's why sometimes you know. Like even with you know some of my wealthy friends, I always offer to pay. I hope you turn me down. Yeah, <laughs> but <laughs> but I always offer to pay because I never want to feel like that. you to think that I want to be with you because you have money. Uh, I'm your friend because I love you. Yeah, I'm your friend because I'm your friend. Yeah, not because you have something that I can get from you. And you having a level of money, you realize that that might be a sensitive. Or it likely is a sensitive spot as far as don't just let the person with the most money pay every time. Yeah, don't just, just sit there and not even go for your yeah, wallet. Just, yeah, even if it's even if even if I'm faking, I'm like, yo, <laughs> <laughs> you know, can't get it out. Yeah. <laughs> now there's been a time. There's been a time where there's been a time where I was out with with, with him and, he, and, he, and he's like, yeah, all right, Mo, all right, you got it. <laughs> but but around me, man, I don't. I ain't, I couldn't tell you the last time somebody picked up a check. Yeah, I can't tell you the last time somebody picked up a check, and it and it's like, damn. Yeah, how does that make you feel? Like sometimes I just go ghost, you know. Mm. Like if we go to a club or something or whatever, like you know, I don't drink, you know, or I drink maybe once or twice a year, and we'll go out and 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 I I may buy the first round. You on your own after that. <laughs> I'm gonna walk away from you because <laughs> I I'm done. I got one for you, and that's it. You know, yeah. I I'm not I'm not I'm not here to help you with your habit. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. So I go ghost. Yeah, no, that that yeah. has to be a tough a tough thing, just because. You know, it's the it's the the sense of like, oh, he got it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like because I mean, even just my buddies that that have money, it's it's such a different thing. And it's like, man, I want to do something, but you know, you don't have half the you know, like if we if we go out to eat or something, it's different when it's like ten people. It's like, bro, I don't even have the money to cover all ten people. I would love to because I have that type of heart. So I can only imagine that feeling of being, you know, the top dog. And that's why, but that's why sometimes you hang out with people that are of like mind, mm-hmm. like finances, um, because it makes it easier. Right. So you almost have to change your friends when you get to a level of money. You, it, 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 it almost it, is not conducive anymore for you to stay around the same level. You almost got to find some folks that have a level it, that's similar. Yes and no. I mean, there are. Yeah. Yes and no. I mean. As you as you as you grow, a lot of your a lot of the people that you used to hang out with are going to weed themselves out anyway because you have nothing in common anymore. Mm. You had high school in common. You had grade school in common. Mm-hmm. You what can we talk about? Yeah, you've if outgrown. I, you've outgrown. Yeah, them. you've outgrown them. If I say to you, all right, dude, let's go to Europe today. They ain't got no passport. They ain't got the. They may have a passport, but they ain't got the money to go. Right. You know, and you know, or if I say, you know, let's let's take this private. Let's take this private plane. You know, you can't have those. You, you know, mm-hmm. and there's certain friends that 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 fly private and be like, damn, I want to fly private with you today. So let me ask you this, because we got we to gotta get through a few more questions before we, before we wrap up. Then I get to go? Um, potentially. All right. But so you've seen a lot of people. You've been around a lot of friends during these various stages mm-hmm. of life. What was the separating thing? What was it? Because you probably had some friends you wanted to be on the PJ with you, but they didn't make it to that point. What do you think separated y'all along the way? And, and my basic, my core of my question is what separates people that don't reach a level of success that includes the finances that that just don't? I think that coming from where we came from in Muncie and and being in a small town, and I consider Indianapolis a bigger Muncie. um, (laughs) I know you (laughs) think it's a bigger Muncie. Um, There's just a lot of people that you grow up with that have that small mind mentality Mm. that don't want to do better than what they're doing. And you become complacent Mm -hmm. to a point to where you don't want to do better. Mm. Now you may in your mind think that you want to do better, but everybody has an excuse Mm -hmm. of why like I tell people all the time, you know, invest. You see me, I, I'll go on Facebook. I never, and I, I, you know, I don't post. I, I just started posting recently. Yeah. But I'm always telling people to invest. Invest your money. It don't, it's not that hard. This, this right here is more than taking naked pictures or naked videos or, or going on Pornhub. You, this is a computer and you can, you can learn the stock market. You know, it's not like, you know, for me, that it, this didn't exist. Mm. So I had to learn on my own. Mm-hmm. You can learn anything right here. But a lot of times people don't want the Everybody has an excuse. Well, I'm, well, I'm going to wait. Wait for what? What are you going to wait for? Yeah. Mm. You know, because every time you you wait another day. They're, they're or, waiting for the perfect opportunity. There's no such. Yeah. And, and so, so, so a lot of times, so a lot of times I used to come home and I remember I, I had a, I had a Bentley and I drove the Bentley home. I, the white one? I think it was white. The two door joint? I had the white. Well, I had the white or the gray one. Okay. But I came home and that, and people look at you. They they treat you different. Mm. You know, they treat you different, and it's like. So even if they even if you wanted to be close to somebody, they almost separate they treat, themselves. They, they treat you different. Yeah. You know, I I I still got some a, a lot a lot of friends that treat me the same. Okay. 
you know, that I grew up with. And I love them for that. Call me an asshole. Call me, just be, just be normal. Mm -hmm. But then there's some people that are jealous of what I've accomplished. And they don't even know because I don't, I don't post anything mm -hmm. of what I do personally. I don't post nothing of my private life to anything, to anybody. If I go on vacation, you'll never know. Mm. Facebook don't know. That's why I clowned you the other day when you posted something. And I do that to everybody <laughs> that posts something on Facebook that they go on somewhere or they went somewhere. I was like, man, what well, man, I wish I could afford to go. <laughs> because nobody gives a fuck <laughs> <laughs> at all where the fuck you've gone, why you were there, why you were on the plane, <laughs> who gives a fuck where you at. Follow my and, story. And it, and, 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 and it bothers me, and it bothers me every time I see it. So I do it because it's like, I don't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. Because when you post stuff on, on social media, it's like before there was Facebook, mm -hmm. before there was Instagram, everybody shut the fuck up mm -hmm. and didn't tell what, what they were doing. Yeah. It's like when you grow when you were growing up, what happens in the house stays in the house. Yeah. Well now everybody wanna show everything that they doing yeah. and people will say, Oh man, that's nice. Oh, congratulations. They don't give a fuck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They they're they're silently hating. Mm -hmm. So for me, I do it the other way. Man, I wish I could afford to go. You know? So every time I see you post some shit, or I see you post some shit. <laughs> Because we already know what to expect. Yeah, I, I do because I, I just don't I don't believe in and and it's different. And my son, Andrew, Harley, love you to death. But all all the younger people, that's just what you guys like to do is is just want to um show what you're doing. Yeah. You know, I nobody knows before this conversation that I own any commercial real estate. So hold on. Period. Let's get into that real quick. Yeah. So because so you invested in what are the what are the commercial um well I bought a, a Circle K gas station, mm -hmm. Kentucky Fried Chicken, mm -hmm. Sonic Restaurant, uh Caliber Collision, and I just got a Burger King. So when you say you bought that, explain 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 that. Because <laughs> triple triple net. Yeah. Triple net, and you put me on game on this. This changed. This changed my whole thinking of. of Triple everything. net real estate is. I don't own the. So everything that you go into, if you go into a Walmart, a Lowe's, Seven Eleven, a gas station, Burger King, Starbucks, somebody like me, you, gentleman George, owns, owns the that, land. Own the land and the building. Mm -hmm. So. You don't have to worry about the staffing issues. You don't have to worry about the product. They got to pay you rent every month mm -hmm. for 20 years. They pay the taxes. Now, it's 20 years the? 15 years, 20 years, okay. whatever. It could be. It's just different leases. Um, so you're not going up in there shining the, the doorknobs. I, I don't give a fuck if it catches on fire. <laughs> <laughs> they still got to pay you? You still got to still pay me pay. rent. For twenty years, <laughs> we call that we call that mailbox money. Yeah. <laughs> mailbox money. Yeah, that's that, that, and that's what it is. And so, <laughs> so it don't matter. Mm -hmm. You got to pay me rent. Yeah. Period. Now and so with triple net, mm -hmm. this. So when you draft up the lease, you don't draft up the well, lease. The lease is already drafted. It's already up. drafted. It's up. Already drafted up. You all you do is you come up with your thirty five percent, thirty five so to thirty five, thirty five to forty percent down. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let so for so for the let's do the math. So for, for a the, million, so, so it'll be four fifty. If you do two hundred thousand, mm -hmm. I mean two million, you got to come up with with thirty five or forty percent. So that would be eight hundred thousand plus. But you got to wire the first fifty thousand when you when you sign. You got to wire fifty thousand dollars the first day you to show it. you for real. Fifty thousand is that you said an earnest money? Earnest money. You get that money back. Then you, then you got to send out another seventy five hundred dollars because that money goes for um, closing. No appraisal mm. and all the other things. And so yeah, so you got to come up with fifty thousand or fifty fifty eight fifty eight thousand dollars off the rip. That's just that's that's just the uh, that's just the start. Yeah. Then you got to come up with the with the rest. Yeah. And so, but yeah, but but it makes 
when I found out about Triple Net, when I walk into you, because you would always think like the Walmarts and the other places own their real estate. You know, McDonald's used to own all their real estate. They don't own none of it now. They've divested from it. Mm. And so, you know, when you go to the AMC theaters, you go to the malls, that's owned by either REITs or somebody like you and I mm -hmm. that, that owns the real estate. REITs, real, real yeah. estate like this, investment this, 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 this where Wall we are Street, right now, is, owns this this, somebody owns this, this probably a REIT that owns this. Mm. Which is a real estate investment trust, mm. you know, but yeah, it's 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 one of the greatest things known to man. Yeah, you know, because it because you you get paid every on the first, my money hits every every first, and you own the property, own own the land and the, the building. building and the building. Yeah. So so when you say someone says when someone says, I own this building. I, I own the signing. Now I may not own the franchise, but this one right here, this is Sonic mine. is mine. <laughs> yeah. This Sonic is mine. This Burger King that I just bought is mine. Triple and net. You don't care about going in and, and talking to the Burger King guy at all because he just pays you. Why? It, yeah, I go I go check on the property twice a year because they have to maintain the driveways, make sure the concrete is good or. You know all the structure because if the lease goes away, I still have to be able to sell that property to somebody to else. Somebody, yes. mm -hmm. So you always want to make sure that the maintenance is always done on it at their expense. Mm -hmm. Never at your expense. It's always their expense. Yeah. They pay the taxes. They pay everything. Yeah. You just sit back and just collect. Yeah, I remember. You know, I I, I bought a caliber collision in in Kentucky. I go to Kentucky, and I don't think they ever saw black people in Kentucky. <laughs> so they made me feel uncomfortable going in there, and I'm like, "Yo, but I, I'm buying this. If if you wanted to make me feel bad, you could have bought it, you know. But you know, so it's different when you know they 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 don't always see people like us mm. doing it, and so you know, I think a lot more black people should look into yeah. you know the triple net thing um because residential is a is a lose lose battle mm. because if you have a only, only if you have a mortgage on it if you have a mortgage on it it's hard yeah because that cuz you're paying let's say somebody's paying you a thousand in rent your mortgage is 500 so you're netting 500 mm -hmm. but you still got to pay the taxes out of that 500 mm -hmm. you know you still gotta come up with maintenance on it. Yep. If they call and say, yo, Steve, and my toilet is, is broke, you gotta replace the toilet. Mm -hmm. You got to send the plumber out there. Yeah. You know, so it's 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 difficult. So buying a trip on that real estate is it's that's gonna help you create wealth. Mm -hmm. You know, and there's 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 good debt and bad, bad. debt. Mm. I, I you know, good debt and come bad debt. Come on, talk about it. And because <laughs> buying using OPM, other people's money, which is the bank's money, you know, you come up with your down payment. The bank is financing the rest, mm -hmm. which which the which the Sonic or the other entity is paying. Is paying. Mm -hmm. So you you sit back and you just you're just you're just exchanging money. Mm -hmm. You know, you yeah. get the money in the account. They draft it out of my account to go pay the bank. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, beautiful. So so <laughs> it's good debt and bad debt, you know, 35 to 40 percent. Yeah, and you and, and you too could be in the triple net game. Nah, we 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 uh we've already. Well, I mean, we've all we've talked about this, you yeah. know, and I've been trying to school y'all to this, but you know, y'all younger than me, y'all don't want to listen to me all the no, time. No, no, but no. it's okay. No, no, listen, no. I mean, I, 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 you I'm already saying, know. No, no, we I know. Talk. Yeah, I know he's listening. I, yeah, but I, I, I mean, you guys have. I, one thing I do appreciate, you know, you guys. You will ask me for advice, or you will listen to my advice. So, so a piece of advice you gave me that I listened to was maxing out my four hundred one k. I think mm -hmm. you told me that mm -hmm. in twenty fifteen or twenty sixteen. I wasn't doing it for whatever reason, and you was like, you said something that I never forget. You was like, you are probably going to waste that two to three hundred extra dollars mm -hmm. out of your check. You know, and I was making a decent amount of money. I don't think I was at six figures, but I was probably you know getting very close there. Um, that has worked out for me. And I, I think I've talked about on one of our earlier shows that I took a loan against that, did some stuff, and jumped into Turo. 
But um, what would you say about that? Any do you see that people don't save enough and they, yeah, man, they don't they, leverage their jobs like that? People are, and and I'm guilty of it too. But overall, like people would much rather have that extra two three hundred dollars in their pocket instead of putting it away for when you get older. When you sixty five is going to be here quickly, mm. you know. I, I remember when I was 18, I'm 54 years old now, 65 is around the corner for me, mm. you know. So you don't realize how quick you're going to get to that age. And if you have no money, then how can you, you know, $1,200 or $1,400 Social Security and you got no savings, you have, no, you have nothing, then, then how are you going to survive because a lot of these girls out here that's doing the OnlyFans or, 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 or whatever they're doing, you're pretty for a minute. That pretty that, that, that that's not going to sustain you yeah. because there's always a pretty a prettier girl coming. Mm. You know, the 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 athlete or or the guy that's making money. If you don't start to to put that money away early, then when you get to be my age. Then you're you're trying to play catch up, mm-hmm. and if you would have started earlier, then you'd be so far ahead of the curve that that when you turn fifty something years old, you'd be like, yo, if I don't want to work no more, if I don't if I don't have to, you know. But a lot of people don't look at it that way. They be like, yo, I can't I I can't move it up to you know from ten percent to fifteen percent because that's gonna take more money take more out of my check like it's still your money mm. it's still your money it's just not in your bank account i like i look at my stuff every morning when i wake up in the morning the first thing i do is i look at my accounts mm. i know to the dollar how much money i got in my bank yeah i know how much money is in my in my investment accounts every day every day yeah how many and accounts you got roughly? i got a lot <laughs> What's, I want to ask you this too, because I know we got to go. We we over time now. I got what, a lot. Everybody wants to be a millionaire, right? Or at least they think they do. But what type of headaches do you deal with 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 the type? And I know you getting a lot of mailbox money, and you kicking up and sleeping, you know, forty eight hours and whatever. I wish. But how are you? What type? I want people to see that it's not all fun and games for you. So what type of what type of problems do you have to solve on a day to day basis with some of your businesses and and I know you do other stuff too so how, you know what does that look like like I won't say I have a lot of problems I think that my biggest fear and I think that you ask anybody that has a decent amount of money you know um, your biggest fear is losing it. That that's my biggest fear. Okay. You know you you know you always you always hope that you make the best decisions financially, um, but I'm always afraid. I mean, fear rules me every day. Now y'all may not think it does, but it always I always have fear um, of losing hmm. of of losing it all because you've I've worked so hard to get it but you don't want to lose it. And so that's why, like for me, you know, I invest 17,000 a month, (laughs) every month, 17 grand goes into the stock market every month, regardless, sometimes I ain't got it. Sometimes, you know, the money be funny. Every month that money goes, period because I don't want to not have it, mm. you know? And that's the biggest fear for me. So I don't really have any, uh, you know, stress from a lot of the businesses other than calling people and saying, yo, your tax bill is due and I need you to send me your, 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 your tax money so I can pay property taxes. But outside of that, you know, that stuff runs itself. Uh-huh. But 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 my biggest challenge all the time is just losing it, you know. That's my fear. And bad investments. 
Or just, I mean, wh- just, how, how, how would you lose it? You, you just don't. No, no, I don't, no, I don't blow it. He ain't going to lose yeah, it. Yeah, I know. Just, that's what I'm saying. No, I say, wow. but I, but I, I, I'm so I, safe. I, 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 but I operate under fear all the time. That's just, that's just something that, you know, everybody always says that, you know, there's, there, for me, and I, and, I, and I see people that say this all the time, and I'm sorry if I'm going to go over time. Fucking storybooks or storyboards is fucking stupid. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the fucking board? vision boards. Oh, vision boards. Yeah, vision like, boards. What a fuck that. What the fuck you need a vision board? If you don't have the fucking motivation to figure this shit out and know it in your head, I've never, I've never once written down a goal. Mm. I've never had a vision board. Mm. I never had to watch a motherfucker say to me, do this. Or you could get rich. It was it, if you don't have it in you, mm. you ain't got it. It ain't gonna come. That's a fact. So me going to go look at Tony Robbins or Grant Cardone, you know, them selling me some dream. Mm. <laughs> you know, if I don't have it inside of me, so you got to have self motivation to want to do it. Yeah. And if you don't have that self motivation, sure. I don't care what 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 book you gonna read. And I, you know, I, I know people that look at investing like, yo, I got to read. I'm going to keep reading about it. What, what you reading it for? Act. Get in it. Yeah. Because, because, you know. You're going to you learn got, you, more. You're going to learn more by losing mm. than by reading. Mm. And I jumped in. And I've lost a lot of money in the stock market. But I tried. And I've got the money back. Mm-hmm. But. You can't sit around and read or let somebody else motivate you or put up these stupid vision boards <laughs> that 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 um that's gonna help motivate you. What the fuck? I don't need I don't need a vision board to say, yo, this is the house I want or this is the car I want. No, I'm I, I'm gonna go get it. Mm-hmm. That's my vision board. Yeah. My vision board is up action. It's is here. You know, you know, mama wouldn't buy me sneakers. I got a sneaker store. <laughs> <laughs> I have a sneaker store because my mama wouldn't buy it. So I can so all the stuff that I couldn't get from mama, I I, I buy myself. So I don't need a vision board. And I'm saying I, I don't understand why it works for other people, mm-hmm. but I just don't see it in me. You gotta have you have to have self-motivation. To, to do anything. I don't need Steven to tell me that I need to do this or I don't need you to tell me. If I don't have it in me, then I'm never going to do it. Yeah, I'm man. always going to come up with an excuse on why I didn't, or why didn't I couldn't start. do it. Yeah. Yeah. Cuz if I would have just waited for 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 somebody to say, "Well, well Vincent, you can do it." <laughs> you know what you right, I could do it. <laughs> Couple f- quick quick fire questions. What's what's the craziest purchase you think you've ever made? What are we talking? What type of car? What's the most expensive car you've ever purchased? I know. I think I know too. Is it the last one? <laughs> man, why we got to do this? Shit, man? All, right, all right, skip that one. Skip that question. Um, I've, I've, I've owned a couple Ferraris. Okay. Um, the craziest per. <laughs> nah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I made the cars. What what do you think is the worst uh, or the biggest amount you've lost in like a, over a period of time like that has like almost made you tear up because you a million dollars in one year or are you just saying just uh, over time in a couple months oh <laughs> even worse <laughs> oh all right yeah I don't I can't even <laughs> right remember the other questions was- I was gonna ask. <laughs> It was in the stock market. It was in the stock market. Cue up the Tamil man. And, and I, and, and, <laughs> Take me and, to the kid. And, 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 I, and, and I almost broke down crying. And um, but yeah, but not. But I, I mean, I've made some. I've made some crazy purchases. You know, I've. I am a. What's the word I'm looking for? You know, I'm a high school dropout, so my words don't come as quick as yours. Um, <laughs> um, I'm an impulse buyer. Okay. So sometimes I'll see something and they're like, nah, I don't need that. Then it starts talking to me. <laughs> then it starts talking to me. It starts talking that. to me. Yeah. 
I mean, we're related. We're first we're related. cousins. So <laughs> it'll start talking to me. I'm like, yo. Me and Steve both have that. Yeah, I'm like, like, yo. Why are you talking to me? Yeah. I don't want to buy you. <laughs> right. Yeah. But I'm going to buy you. Yeah. And then I'll be like, yo, <laughs> I'm going to buy you. I don't need that watch. Man, I don't, I'm not going to buy another watch. Yeah, I just bought that watch. <laughs> you know, so I, yeah, so. Yeah, but that's I, a blessing, though. You got it to spend. No, no, yeah. And, 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 I, and, and for me, what allows me to do it is that I justify. We always, everybody justifies everything, mm -hmm. but I justify it by what I invest, mm -hmm. what I put away monthly. Yeah. You know, and I do that for my grandkids, my nephew, my brother passed away, so I, I, I invest for him. You know, I, I, I always want to make sure that, that I talk to them about money. I talk to my grandson Elijah about money now. Yeah. You know, I always show him what what what's in his account. You know, he's eight years old with with twenty grand. Wow. You know, and I'm like, I wish I'd had twenty grand at eight. Now, you know, and I think that a lot of people should start doing that, talking to their kids about money early. Mm -hmm. And there's other people that say, well, you should, you know, you shouldn't talk to other, you know, kids about money early. Let them be kids. Yes, let them be kids, but they should still learn about money because they're not going to learn about money in school. Mm -hmm. You know, so teach them the the, the good habits, mm -hmm. you know, have some bad habits too because we all have to, you know, make ourselves feel good by buying something like that nice watch you got on your wrist. It made yeah. you feel good. This was a gift. Whatever. <laughs> a, gift from, a gift from your, your American Express. <laughs> A gift from your American <laughs> Express. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. This weird. is my final question. This is my final question. And Steve, you you give your final one because we're way over time. But you've been very successful. I'm very proud to have you as a, as a cousin, as a family member. But I want to ask you this: Is there anything you look back? And I know there's probably you could probably say a lot of things, but there's any one thing you say? I wish I could have done differently. I wish I'd have graduated from high school. That, that still matters to you a little bit. Yeah. I, 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 I wish that I would have used my intelligence instead of my comedic powers. Because I get it, you know, I get it from mama. Mm -hmm. Mama's a clown, you know, when she's not evil. <laughs> Shout out to evilness, mama. <laughs> Love um, you, Joyce. Yeah. But, um, I wish I would have done more in school. You know, as I said, I, I was smarter than everybody, but I just, I knew I was smarter than everybody, but I didn't want to apply myself. Mm. So that's the one regret that I, that I have that I will go to my grave with that I didn't graduate from high school. Now, I'm successful in spite of it, but... That's one thing that I wish I I would have done because because Mama's still mad at me and yeah. and and I wish I would have been able to make her proud in that way. I've made Mama proud in other ways, yeah. but that's the one thing that even though she won't talk about it, but I know that still bothers her that I didn't do it and I regret that. Yeah, no. If not for me, for her. Got it. Got it. What you got for me, Steve, so I can get out of here because this light is hot. <laughs> <laughs> um, man, I really, I mean, I asked all my questions, man. Um, but for the people, the people. If, if you would, if there was um, a way to start for somebody who's never invested before, what would be the top two things? that you would tell them to get into, like right now? They don't have any money or they're working. They need to put something to the side, something. What would be the first thing that you would tell them to do? Um, I'm looking at my phone, so I'm not, uh, I'm trying to remember this. Uh, so Acorns is a great, a, a great way to start. start. Mm -hmm. Because you can attach your credit cards, your banking information, and every time you pay bills, it's called Roundup. And you could do five times Roundup, ten times Roundup. I advise the ten because um, if you spend $100, I take $10 out. Um, what I started with, and this company is still around to this day, is Computershare.com. You can buy 
damn near every company you want to buy. Like I buy Amazon, Home Depot, McDonald's, Tesla, Google, AT&T. Uh, I buy like 20 different stocks from them. But you can start with $100. Some, some companies even let you do $50 and they take the money right out of your account. So it does not, um, so you can't say I forgot. Mm. They, they debit the money out of your account either on the 1st or the 15th. And, and that's it, called computer share. Computershare.com. I mean, there's so you got computershare.com, you got um, Acorns. You got Acorns. There's another one that I that I've dealt with for years. It's called Share Owner Online. Um Share Owner Online. Yeah, Share Owner Online. It's I, I buy CVS, Walgreens, Procter and Gamble, Carnival Cruise Line. Um I think there's five other companies I buy from them. But yeah, but they take the money out of your account. And it just makes it easier because you got the Robin and, and I also I do Robin Hood as well. But for me, I'm old, so I like to stick to what you know, you know, stay away from crypto, mm. stay away from crypto. You know, I, I don't think that crypto I was looking at this economist that crypto is just. It's stupid, mm. you know, I think for younger people that that everybody. Younger people have lost a lot of money at FTX and and, and other companies. Um, buy equities, buy 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 real estate, buy buy. All that. But if you're just starting out, share owner online, computer share, Robinhood, and have that money come out of your account. Acorns. Yeah, Acorns. Have that money come out of your account all the time mm -hmm. because you know when you're doing it every month, it it. It, it builds up. You'll see. You'll see. You know. You know. If you put in. If if you put in a hundred dollars a a month. That's twelve hundred dollars a year. Over ten years, you know that money adds up. And with compound interest, with the the way the stock market is working, is is and especially right now everything is on sale. Put that money away because everybody. I don't care who you are, unless you're homeless. And ask them for money on the strip. Everybody got a hundred dollars that you trick off on 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 stupid on stupid stuff. Everybody do, and probably more people got two or three hundred dollars. Put that money away. When I started out, I was doing two hundred dollars a month. I was buying Walgreens and Disney, hundred dollars each. And as you make more money, you put more money in. And that's what I would do for anybody that's just starting out. And and, and if you constantly do it, you'll look in your account and be like, yo, I got $100,000 here. Mm -hmm. How did that happen? Over five years, be like, yo, I got 100 grand. Then, and, 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 and as you see your money grow, it makes you want to do more. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that's how I started. It's like, yo, I, my account's like, oh, I got 10, 10 grand in here. Now it's at 50,000. Okay, I got 100 grand. Okay, now let me, let me add an extra $50 or an extra $100. And, and you just, and, and you start seeing it grow, man, and it makes it makes you feel good about saving. Mm -hmm. It makes you feel good when you can pull up on your phone, and be like, yo, I got a, I got half a million dollars in in, in my account, yeah, you know, or or hundred thousand dollars, or fifty thousand, whatever it is. But you're starting, mm -hmm. and that's the problem. A lot of people just won't start. Mm -hmm. You know, you make we, we, we talk all, about that. We all make excuses on why we can't start something. Start. So, yeah. You may fail, but start. Yeah. You never know until you until you try. You know, with me starting the stock market, I could have failed miserably. But I didn't. And I mean, there's times I did, but overall, man, I it worked out for me. Yeah. You know, and I'm happy. <laughs> well, y'all heard it from the man himself. Joint session, talking to a millionaire. Start, and you might just win. This All is right. good. This, this is, is real good. good. Thanks, bro. Thanks, hey, famo. Man, I hope I didn't bore y'all, man, but it's hot as a mother. <laughs> under this light span. George, yeah, you damn. In the, you, in the, you in the hot seat. I'll turn on the yeah, AC. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you just, <laughs> yeah please. Right, peace, y'all. We out. All right. Peace. I'm thinking them wealthy thoughts, baby. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>